Good morning, La Casa de Cristo, everybody the watching online. Welcome to you. What a blessed Sunday morning it is here at the church. You know, every Sunday we get to gather here, and uh, we're just so blessed with the opportunity to come together, worship God together, share with each other praises for Jesus, and uh, what a blessing it is. So thank you for joining us on this particular Sunday. This is that which takes place in between the before and the after. This is the interlude. And we have somebody very special with us this morning. This is Liz Lucas. Liz is one of our adult education teachers at the church here, also a longtime member of the church. So we're going to hear more about some of the things that Liz is teaching through the adult education program. But also, this particular weekend, she did something very special for us, and that is she gave an extension of the sermon message. There is a special line in the, the scripture text for this morning, which is, you will reap what you will sow. This is from Galatians chapter 6. You will reap what you will sow. This is such a captivating line that, uh, you know, all of us could take that line and I could ask you, what does this mean? And I encourage you to reflect on that this week. And so we did the same thing with Liz Lucas here. With all your knowledge about the Bible, and not only the Bible, but just life itself, I asked Liz, Liz, what is the meaning of you will reap what you will sow? And tell us what you did with uh, with that question. Well, I at first I wasn't really sure where you were going, and if it was some sort of a a question of my faith, and if I didn't answer correctly, it, there would be dire consequences. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I gave you a brief answer, and you were, I think, pleased that it wasn't something that you would have to give me counseling about. So, <laughs> you know, it, it worked. Well, I didn't know that it would be more involved after that and that you would want me to expound on it. Um, but it really got me thinking about sowing and reaping. And as I said on uh, the video that we did, that makes me think of growing plants. And even like in your sermon today, and you talk about the corn being grown, and it depends on how you plant it is how it's going to grow. Well, you know, God made Adam and Eve to c take care of his best creation, the earth. They were the first gardeners. And they took care of everything until sin entered the picture. And then... What they had sown, those seeds of sin, they had to reap the consequences and leave the Garden of Eden. And there's example after example in the Bible of things like this. But, you know, we as individuals also discover that there's always the consequences. We're always reaping what we have sown. And we don't always like to think about the consequences. We think that if we give somebody a, a snippy reply to something, that's our right to do. Mm, interesting, yeah. But that's going to come back to us sometime. Whereas if we treat people with kindness, even undeserved kindness, that will always return to us. Yes, that is so true, and I, I love how you, how you frame that of, you know, at times we think like, well, it's my right to, to reply in that way because they deserve it, but I am going to reap what I just sowed out there into the world, right? Exactly. So uh, you were talking earlier also about um, uh, this this idea of the agricultural tie-in and the, the planting. You had mentioned in, in your response about um, how corn grows and you have some memories of this as as a younger child am i correct oh yeah my my dad grew up on a farm in northeastern iowa and he loved growing things and we always had a garden it didn't matter when we lived in the city when we moved to the suburbs he always had a and it was a big garden and thriving and uh, i can remember going out every night before dinner and cutting lettuce so that we could have a salad and, you know, picking some tomatoes and having some herbs that were there. Um, he even grew grapes because he really wanted to make wine. But Jesus was much more successful at turning water into wine than my dad was 
ever <laughs> at turning grapes into wine. <laughs> but he made some really good vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> So we all understand this idea. Whatever we plant is, is what we're going to get. So if, if I want to um, get lettuce, I should not plant tomato seeds, right? This is a basic concept that all of us would say, well, of course, that's so obvious. But then why is it, Liz, that uh, we think that we can sow hatred in this world and harvest love. You had you had mentioned in your response earlier that uh, you know there's a lot of just sowing of of, of, of discontent in this world, sowing of uh, disgruntlement with each other. Why would we expect anything else than that same thing back to us? Well, I think people who tend to do that feel number one that they have a right to do this because they are special, they are important, and they should not be bothered with the problems of life. And so if somebody is irritating to them, they have the right to let that person know. And they really do not see that they there will be consequences for that because they feel it's their God-given right to act that way, mm. um, unfortunately. And sometimes we need to be taken down a peg or two to realize that we've kind of veered off the path and we're in the weeds of life. And we've got to get back to where God wants us. Because it's not easy to stay on the path. The path is very narrow and it's easy to lose your way. But we need to stay in the word. And that's what's going to give us the strength and the direction of where we should be going in life. So simple and yet so profound at the same time. Here's this line in scripture, you reap what you sow. Instead of just going by that line so quickly and just moving on, really take time this week to ask yourself, what does that mean? And what does that mean for my own life? Where am I sowing my seeds? So I did that with Liz Lucas this week, and we're so blessed because Liz... Uh, created a response to that question. When I asked her, what does that mean? You reap what you sow. She created a response to that and recorded it into a video. And that video is now on our church app, right, Liz? Yes, it is. Tell us about the process of, of what it was like to, to film that response and, and know that that's going on to the church app. Well, um, I was extremely nervous to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, um, and I think the reason I was so nervous was I was thinking more about me than thinking about God. And I had my priorities mixed up. Uh, and I, I needed to focus more on God. But we have wonderful staff members here at this church. And Derek took that video, and he put it together, and he made me look terrific. Yes. Much more yep. confident than I was feeling that day. Because <laughs> um, this is all something new to me. But... Um, I'm grateful for the people and and you were you were so nice about everything it just um it went really well so. so thank you, because this provides all of us a way to deeper reflect on this text. So I invite you to go to, to our church app. Go to the church app through La Casa de Cristo. You can download that church app. If you need any help or assistance finding that, just call our church office and we can surely help you out with that. But on there, you will find that video of Liz Lucas talking further about what it means that you reap what you will sow. So we thank you for that, Liz. And we have just a little bit of time left, Liz. So I also want to ask you another question. Sure. And that is... Uh, you are always teaching classes here at the church, teaching all of us in many different ways. What do you have coming up in, in your class life? Well, this is something I'm finding kind of exciting for the fall. Uh, for the month of October, I'm going to be teaching a five-week series on favorite Bible stories. You know, we all know the gist of the stories of um, Noah and the flood and Jonah and the whale and David and Goliath and others. But um, we don't always know all the details, or why are they in the Bible? And do we really know the entire story, or is there a part that we never heard? So we're going to explore all of these things in a relaxed, fun environment where there's never any homework, and 
We don't ask you questions, but you're always welcome to ask questions or make a comment and uh, just have some fun learning what God has to say to us in the Bible. Thank you so much, Liz. All of this is an invitation to take uh, what we're exploring on Sunday mornings and to make it go into the rest of our week. You can download the church app and further explore that text from our scripture text today, Galatians chapter 6, specifically that line, you reap what you sow. Spend some time on that this week. And then as Liz just shared with us also, spend time in the, the deeper life of study with the church too. Not just coming to worship on a Sunday morning for one hour, but also participating participating in the study life, our Bible studies, the classes that Liz teaches, the classes that all of our teachers are, are involved in. Thank you so much for diving deeper into your faith. Thank you, Liz. It was a blessing to be with you this morning. Look for her on the church app. God bless you all. This has been The Interlude.